Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for The Cuckoo's Fiance, Chapter 63. Uh, when we last left our heroes, um, Hero had gotten, not actually kidnapped, but taken back by her mother to assuming to assumingly meet her fiance. Uh, Erika tells all this to Nagi and Sachi, uh, and Nagi goes off to the Segawa Shrine to try to talk uh, Mrs. Segawa out of giving her daughter away. Uh, with a very, like, half-thought-out plan, uh, which he doesn't even go with in the end, when he sees Hiro um, in a stunning sequence, and just, without thinking about anything else, takes her and runs, without thinking about the consequences. Um, and now, the consequences, as we jump right on into chapter 63, but first a flashback to two years ago. Uh, as Nagi reads, like, his, his grades, I'm second place? Umino Nagi, middle school, third year. This is a bit before high school. In all my 15 years of taking exams, I've always been number one. This has never happened before. Sego a hero. Just what kind of man is he? I like that man is stressed there, because, like, we all know what, what reveals about to happen. Um, though also, like, hero is at least sometimes a man's name. Because we know, like, like Hiro Mashima is, is, is a man. Um, so I wonder if there's any any meaning to that, or if it's just a name that Yoshikawa kind of picked out. Probably the latter, but something, something to think about. Um, and then we see Hiro for the first time, uh, or first time chronologically, um, with, like, long hair and, like, a, an anime mom's side ponytail. Megrogawa High School, Class 1A. Seigo a Hiro. Pleased to meet you all. Oh, this is this is the next year. Okay, so he he never meets Hiro in middle school. It's not until until high school where he, where he sees her for the first time. Uh, anyway, sixty third foul. Never speak to me ever again. Uh, I'm gonna bet that's gonna be a hero line to sort of stir up some drama in this arc. Uh, and Nagi looks at her for the first time and just stunned. Ah, uh, a girl, Segua. Could it be that guy who always gets first on mock exams? She goes to our school? She's the freshman representative? She must have been the top scorer for entrance exams. So, like, right away, everyone everyone kind of already knows her. Um, even just from, from like, rumors. Um, and, and like, like the gossip mill is already kind of turning. Uh, and Nagi thinks, but to think that we would enroll in the same high school. No. If you're headed for the top, it's a given you'd come here. Starting with the first midterm, and Nagi, with all the confidence of a man about to be proven completely wrong, says, I'll be taking first place. Second of 243 students. <laughs> Stunning Nagi. Uh, and we hear a couple of girls in the background. As expected, seiko san scored first. She got a perfect score on five different subjects. That's just crazy. She's godlike. That's amazing. I wish I could be like her. Um, which is, a, it's an important distinction that this is a prep school. Uh, because I feel like in a more, like, traditional public high school, no one would be envious of the super smart, lonely girl. Important note here is that the way she's framed, she's very, very lonely. Um, like, no one else is really in her life. Uh, this might just be me looking way too deep into it, um, which I'm wanting to do on this series. Uh, because I, I found Yoshikawa to be a really good artist. Um, but like we see as everyone's kind of talking about how they, how she, how they want to be like her, there are two people in the background, both of them notably facing away, uh, which almost feels like it kind of adds to the isolation. Um, whether, whether that's intentional or not is almost besides the point. Um, anyway, uh, Nagi is kind of thinking to himself, he looks at his score, 478 out of, out of 500 and thinks, no, no. This was just a review of middle school content. It couldn't be helped, right? But this, I mean, he's like literally shaking. This is the first time I felt so frustrated. On um, that night at home, Sachi comes in with like an, a box of uh, Othello, I think the game is called. Hey, big bro, let's play a game. And Nagi just shuts her down. Nope. What? Why? Finals are coming up, so I'm busy. We'll play next time. Uh, and Sachi presses finals, but you just finished midterms. Uh, and then Sachi calls to, um, I'm guessing her, her parents, maybe? Um, Big Bro's gotten weird since he started high school. He studies, he studies even more than he used to. What do we do if he keeps this up and turns into a loner? 
Uh, and and uh, Nagi just snaps at her. Shut up. And Sashi kind of pouts for a second and then yells, If you don't want to play with me that much, then I'm never inviting you again. Stupid Nagi. And she slams the door. Uh, and and uh, Nagi thinks, Nagi? What has she been calling him beforehand? Is it just Big Bro? Oh, yeah, because earlier in the... She does just call him Big Bro uh, for the earlier flashback scenes. Um, I'm curious if, given what we know about Sachi's romantic inclinations, if calling him Nagi is in some way a way to not think of him as her brother. Um, I don't know. That, I hope, is just looking, is just looking too deep into it. Hmm. Um, and so, so Nagi says, Nagi sighs and says to himself, even though she's in her second year of middle school, she still acts like a little kid. And he hears this like bang on the other side of the door and kind of like, eep! And Sachi's still there and pouts. What's her problem? Um, but then he gets back to studying and he's back to focusing on Hero. Next time, I'll beat her for sure. And he doesn't, as we all know. Um... Second to 243, and he kind of, you know, tries to hold it in, but it's still, like, visibly shaking. How? How the hell? Seiko-san really got first again, and with a perfect score? That girl's a total prodigy. She's on a whole nother level. I, I heard she was the only one who solved that trick question. Uh, and Nagi thinks, and I lost my perfect score to that trick question. That teacher is just pure evil. Um... So we're seeing sort of, sort of, this is definitely like pre, pre falling in love with Hero. Uh, but someone says, but you know, Seiko-san is like always alone, isn't she? Uh, and here, that kind of visual, visual language I picked up on page five is even more clear as now no one is in the panel. Um, but it is very much the same kind of, of points I was bringing up um, back in that earlier scene. She's very clearly depicted as isolated. Um, and Nagi still listens in to the gossiping. Well, she's kind of hard to approach. Like, she gives off this vibe. And Nagi thinks, for the first time I met someone who was the same as me. Um, and then, uh, I think this is Sachi. Uh, yeah, 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 it's definitely Sachi. Nuh-uh. Nobody wants to be grouped with you. I was, I was a little bit thrown off for a sec, because the, the pigtails are a different look for her. Um, it's, it's like almost a mini Erika look. Is what, what kind of threw me off. Uh, but there's no way it would be Erika, so I kind of kind of worked that out fast. Anyway, nobody wants to be grouped with you. And Nagi looks at her. What? I don't know who they are, but if there was another person on the planet that was much aloner as you, humanity would go extinct. <laughs> See that that feels like like that almost like work. That feels like a direct argument I've had with my younger brother, which is just why it it's it's why Nagi Sachi doesn't work because they're written as siblings. Except when there's like sibling, sibling, sibling. As soon as a romantic, romantic vibe. As soon as Yoshikawa wants a romantic vibe, boom, they're written as romantic. Until the scene is done, they go back to being siblings, and it's bad. Uh, but whatever. That's not the focus of this chapter, and I will not. I mean, it's too late for me now. I already, I already, already sidetracked this video with a rant about how much I hate about how much I hate Nagisachi. Um. Anyway, focusing. Uh, Nagi counters, what's that supposed to mean? Um, and then Sachi presses, actually, you weren't thinking of them as a rival, are you? Someone like that doesn't care about others. They only care about themselves. Uh, and Sachi's just, like, casually eating this popsicle, having no idea, I don't think she has any idea, um, okay, so, right, so when I read this earlier line, you weren't thinking of them as a rival, are you? My initial thinking is that she's about to say, you like her. But I think it's more, you shouldn't think of them as a rival, because they're not thinking about anyone else. Um, anyway, uh, Sajik then continues, Ah, but that would put them in the same category as you, wouldn't it? Um, and then Nagi says, so you mean the same as me? Which is exactly what she said. Um, maybe it's a, it's a grammatical joke that doesn't trans translate into English. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, Nagi kind of continues, That's exactly why... I have to beat them. The word them there is interesting. It feels like he's hiding the fact that Hiro is a girl to, to Saji. Um, 
Maybe. But Sashi listens to that and kind of blushes. Somehow it makes me irritated that you've been enjoying yourself recently. Hmm? What? Never mind. Um, then we come to September 1st, the opening ceremony of the, the second term. Uh, as Nagi thinks, heh, I'll get her for sure with today's, with, today, with today's refresher test. In preparation for today, I studied six hours a day through summer break. I devoted myself to upping my academic skills. I completely changed in the first term. Um, and then he hears this, like, kind of questioning noise. Or he, he, he like, is kind of, he hears something that makes him question. And then the noise gets louder, I think. And, oh. Oh, he's, he, he, uh, it's like a stomach bug. Uh, or, like, food poisoning or something. So then we next see him in the, the hospital, um, or in the, in the nurse's office lying in bed. Uh, flashback to the night before with Papa Yohei saying, You better not, Nagi. It's left over from yesterday. You underestimate my gut. Oh, no, that, that's earlier that morning. Okay. The tone caught to from this morning. I totally underestimated it. Damn it. And then he, he corrects himself. No, I overestimated my gut. I guess I can't beat her this time. So one thing I will say, uh, a bit of a tangent, slight tangent, uh, but I'm a little shocked how much of this chapter is just in flashback. Uh, like, I was expecting, you know, to see the consequences, as I kind of alluded to in my uh, my previously on, uh, to see the consequences of last chapter, and instead we're like two-thirds of the way through and we've not gotten any of that yet. And like, it's not bad content, uh, but I do hope we get to, to the present sooner rather than later. Anyway. Mm. Um, so we cut to some, some other day after he's no longer sick, despite being the same age, even though our, our educational environment is the same. Why can't I beat her? I oh, know he's, he's thinking about another day because he's still in bed. What am I missing? And then he just thinks, I guess it just might be dumb luck. But we see a shadow on the other side of the curtain and then a voice. Wait, where are you going? Uh, and it's Hiro, who is also kind of feverish. Uh, like, putting her tie back on. I'm going back to class. And the nurse tells her, Seiko-san, stop! And Naki watches from behind the curtain. You've got a 39-degree fever. You, sh you should just call it quits for today. Um, just a quick, quick being an American here. What is 39 in Fahrenheit? 102. Okay, that gives us some, some clarity. Um, but Hiro, Hiro tells her, I'll be fine. If I don't take the test, I can't take first place. And that is the moment Nagi realized he liked her. Um, like, that is the moment, I think. Seeing her determination. Um, and he thinks, there's no way I can beat her. Uh, we see Nagi got, got uh, bumped down to third. Um, and then, so there's some, some conversation that's happened already. With Nagi seemingly having approached Hiro and said something. Uh, and Hiro just kind of reacts, huh? And Nagi kind of stammers out, I just, uh, thought you were amazing. You took the test even with a fever. I'm sure that behind the scenes, you're, al you're always pushing yourself to the limit. I guess I'll just have to admit defeat and settle for second place. Uh, and Hiro, Hiro speaks, you knew? And Nagi looks away, she speaks, um, yeah, the morning of the test in the nurse's office... I took the test with a stomach ache. I guess it wasn't any. Um, and Hiro just blushes at the idea. I think that at the idea that someone has like seen her weakness, uh, which kind of makes me kind of curious about her home life. Uh, but Naki is stunned. Uh, and then Hiro just says, never again. Huh? Never speak to me ever again. Okay. There's a, that's not where I was expecting the title line to get thrown in. I was expecting something like, you know, Hiro has to say that to to make her parents happy because she doesn't want Nagi to get wrapped up in, in her shit. Uh, especially as Hiro is starting to, to realize Nagi's feelings for Erika and is kind of maybe trying to give up, similar to what we saw Sachi in, in 61. Uh, so she tells Nagi, never speak to me ever again in the present. But no, it's freshman hero who says that. Um, okay. So my, I'm guessing now, though, that this this flashback is going to be a multi-chapter thing. 
because uh, now we need to know what's going on with Hero that makes her so desperate to never be seen as weak, and how their relationship kind of resets in time for chapter one, where they're like basically strangers. It's it's basically Nagi sort of sort of fawning at, at her, but from from a distance, and Hero barely seems to realize he exists. Uh, but anyway, uh, Hero has her outburst. Never speak to me ever again. And she just glares at Nagi. Nagi's kind of stunned. He starts to sweat. Uh, and then we come to the next day. Uh, he's apparently just left that conversation there. And Nagi sighs, closing, closing his locker. I guess I should apologize. All right, let's go. Although, she did tell me to never talk to her. Uh, and then he walks, he walks into the hallway. And we see a, a crowd of students gathered. And we hear people gossiping. What happened all of a sudden? Yo, this is wild. This is way impossible. She is the one who should have all cubes. Uh, that looks to be the Icarus guys, and I don't know what the hell he's talking about there. Uh, the other one says, she's got the seal of approval. And Nagi looks on, huh? Just like that. That was the day Seigo-san had changed. And we see she's ditched the glasses, cut her hair short. She's in her present day, present day look. I think it was at that moment that I fell in love with her. I don't understand. And so destiny began to shift. Next time, the results of their elopement. Interesting word choice there, because as I recall, um, uh, next time the results of their elopement, yes, is in fact the exact blurb that 62 left out off on. Um, though that does say, but first how Nagi and Hiro first met. Um, so maybe, maybe, is there a but first in this chapter? Um, no, it's just, and so destiny began to shift. Um, so yeah, there's definitely something going on with Hero in the past that leads to, to freshman Hero becoming, you know, short hair, no glasses Hero. Um, and I, that might be a mystery that like Yoshikawa kind of hangs over our heads for a while. Especially if next chapter does bring us back to the present, um, then things like, you know, why, why Hiro told Nagi to never speak to her again, that's the kind of thing that we'll sort of have to keep, keep hanging for a while, uh, maybe. Um, or we could get all the answers to that next time. Who knows? Anyway, um, I think it's kind of clear this is not the chapter I really wanted. I wanted a follow-up to last chapter's in just amazing um final sequence um um and that's not what this is this is sort of a a it's a chapter that kind of could have been anywhere like i get why it's here why it's sort of as we move into this big hero centric story arc i get why they they decide you know yoshikawa has has put this early scene uh right as that arc is getting off the ground uh but it also doesn't really have to be here um, um, so, so it's not, not super vital, I think is the sense I get, especially after last time's cliffhanger. Um, that being said, Yoshikawa's visual storytelling is still fantastic. I love, you know, like the, the panel I brought up on page five of everyone kind of looking away before they make Hero's loneliness so clear. Um, uh, just kind of, kind of enforcing that sense of isolation. Um, I love... Uh, what, what's, what's the next big thing there? Um, the, let's talk about the Sashi conversations that are just kind of there, um, that are maybe at the end, like that last bit, as, as Sashi kind of looks away on page 12, could be romantic, which again, please don't. Sashi's just kind of a mess of a character sometimes. Um, um, but then we get, you know... The, the climax of the chapter is that the, the, the nurse's office and the confrontation after. Um, and that's where really all of the kind of, of theorizing would come in from. The, what exactly was going on with Hero's home life um, a year ago that made her so desperate to seem strong? You know, why, like not just so like, why is she so desperate to take first place? There are a lot of reasons for that. Um, a lot of potential reasons, I mean, but why, 
why is she so desperate that anyone who knows that she's not this perfect, strong girl, why does she want anyone who knows that to never speak to her again? Um, that's the more context we need from Hero in this flashback. If this flashback is going to continue next week and not, like, months from now. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the thing to keep in mind. And then how does all of that make Hero cut her hair and ditch the glasses? And what does that represent in terms of, like, the hero of back then and the hero of now? There's definitely, like, like shades of the hero of now in the past hero. Specifically her, her like, ferocity at when she yells at Nagi on page 19. Um, but, like, she definitely has a, has, a, has a different vibe. She seems a little bit more standoffish in the past than she does now. Um, and I want to know kind of what... what change what made her made her kind of reinvent herself um and that's something something to look forward to in the future maybe next week maybe not um and if not next week then we'll be getting um the result of nagi running away with hero uh and that'll be a lot of fun so yeah i think i'm gonna leave this video off here hope you all enjoyed the chapter and the video itself if you did feel free to drop me a like or subscribe you know do whatever makes it happy you know and remember your life is your own okay Bye.